My name's Sue Hampton. I'm an author. I've got more than 20 books for children and teenagers, but this book is for grown-ups. I'm also an ambassador for Alopecia UK. I'm going to read the opening of my novel Flashback and Purple. It's headed Part 1, A Week in October, Chapter 1. And I'm introducing my central character, Annie Capaldi. Annie Capaldi had read somewhere that when we wake, our unique consciousness is only made possible by the particular physical body that houses it. Which was annoying, because it had taken her decades to cut loose emotionally from that body and develop an interest in the possibility that she might have a soul. These days Annie needed rather more time each morning to sharpen the blurred edges of that conscious self. So for a while, from bedroom to shower to kitchen, all she processed was another wet October Monday. She could, if required to prove that she wasn't completely out of touch with the wider world, have named the Prime Minister and identified the year as the one that followed 2012, when she had been an ambassador at the Olympic Park. But for a while, the new day came with no date tag, no frisson or fanfare. In fact, as she dropped the rinsed out marmalade jar into the recycling bin, she felt a familiar kind of vague security in the knowledge that thanks to the word files on her laptop, the week ahead of her already had a recorded outline and tabulated schedule, all backed up somewhere in the memory she trusted to shake itself awake in its own good time. But it was the BBC breakfast presenters who announced the number, the key to open the door. With the remote control in one hand and a coffee mug in the other, she was left staring for a moment at the blank screen. The data left over she had no time to digest, like the toast crust on her plate. And as she continued, through the clatter in the sink, teeth cleaning, lip balm and the clink of car keys, the number followed, in foreground and bold, centred. 25 years in the job to the day. With marriages and reigns, didn't 25 mean silver? Half as good as gold. Stepping outside into rain she hadn't even guessed, Annie found a car she'd almost forgotten. Probably because 25 years earlier Arthur had taken the VW, leaving her to the train. As she turned out of her drive, it struck her that she was a leftover herself, the single survivor of every change. But wasn't she entitled to feel some kind of satisfaction or sense of achievement? Who stayed in a job for 25 years these days, apart from the Queen?